That feeling, you just can't quite put it into words. That beautiful, got him scream. Oh, what a rush. Why, you may ask? Why don't we ask Keith from 2020, who seems to have all the answers? Because it hardly ever f***ing happens. By human nature, we want what we can have. And when we can have it easily, it loses value. Yes, my friends, today we'll be talking about something that revolves around the law of probability, as well as how to positively impact that probability of seeing the iconic Gotham screen. I'm gonna have to stop you right there, Mr. 2020 Keith. Times have changed, my old friend. Hence, today, I will be discussing the manner in which I believe they have changed since, and thus, what you should do to increase your chances of copying, as well as what you no longer need to spend so much time doing that we were doing. Before we jump into precisely what's new, let's briefly run down some of the fundamentals to ensure that we're all on the same page. Taking an L derives from numerous external and internal variables. The most notable external variable is quite obvious, and that is supply and demand, basic economics. Evidently, there is a reason why many limited sneakers sell for such extreme premiums in the secondary market, while others, uh, w well, we've all seen it. No matter how fair Nike tries to make their algorithms, people will still take L's solely because of this factor. For example, the Union Dunk Low had a total of 25,000 pairs on Nike Sneakers US alone. This is undisputably a minuscule amount in comparison to the amount of users entering for these due to their immense demand. Entry estimates for very hype drops like this exceed well over a million. Another notable misconception still is that the reason people aren't copying is somehow due to bots. This certainly used to be the case before Nike's bot protection team started upping their game, along with their use of Akamai and Kasada protection. Now, on very hype drops, in order for tasks to at least have a fair probability of winning or even being entered, browser mode is required, which is significantly more CPU heavy in comparison to the old way tasks used to be ran. However, as of 2021 onwards, even this started becoming very ineffective despite countless updates Nike sneakers bot developers were pushing. Flops became more and more consistent across all sneakers bots. However, what was notable was that the bot still managed to successfully enter. The amount of wins relative to the amount of wins prior to 2021 was extremely low, however, and occasionally even zero on Nike Sneakers US. These bots were using successful Akamai and Kasada APIs to successfully enter, and yet bot entries still weren't winning. In fact, it was precisely this that influenced me to investigate this further, given these new changes that took place throughout 2021, around a specific time that we'll get to. Initially, in that 2020 Key to Sneakers video, we found that one of the most notable internal variables was account activity and engagement. This theory seemed to hold up quite well through 2020 into 2021, unless it was just confirmation bias. In fact, Nike sneakers themselves ended up verifying this theory on their publication on how exclusive access really works. Yes, literally Nike themselves verified that this was essential. And so in that 2020 Key to Sneakers video, I explained that whether you're botting or going manual, it is extremely important that you maintain high account activity. There are quite a few ways you can generate activity without purchasing items, essentially just by emulating human behavior. The most simple ways to execute this would be through the following. Liking posts, clicking the share option, watching the street sneakers videos or live streams, and simply going for more drops in general. Not only did this initially hold up through numerous reports of anecdotal evidence through Twitter, cook groups, etc., but as I stated earlier, even Nike themselves verified that this was indeed the theory, which was quite ironic. Now, this is where things get extremely interesting and quite confusing. Ironically, after this publication, this is when things began to change. It was a very notable time for Nike Nike's random algorithm testing as well, since this is when they were releasing the 50 off-white dunks exclusively through exclusive access, which is a completely random selection process if you're not familiar with it. And so, for marketing purposes, they incentivized all of us with this publication to watch more of their content on the Nike Sneakers app and generally spend more time on it. It is brilliant free marketing. What's so fascinating about this situation isn't the genius marketing though, it's that just after this publication, 
publication or around this time, the general consensus began to change. I even conducted a public poll asking users who did get access how much activity they did have and vice versa. Granted, this was only anecdotal evidence, but there was an immense amount of reports. You could feel free to peruse the public tweets yourself. Throughout analyzing all these reports, it was extremely clear that there was no correlation with user engagement at all. Now, does this mean that Nike was intentionally lying to us about their selection process? With just anecdotal evidence, we can't yet undoubtedly conclude that, but I will propose something and allow you guys to come to your own individual conclusions afterwards. So Nike deliberately put out this article around the time that the very anticipated off-white dunk lows were releasing. It was clearly a very strategical time to post this. In this article, Nike made sure to clearly articulate the importance of app engagement, of course. Not only that, but they even had a video made showing an individual illustrating probabilities with counting methods. Given that exclusive access revolves around probability, on the surface, the vast majority of people probably just skimmed through this and assumed that this was relevant to how the selection process worked, and I personally believe that this is what Nike assumed would happen. That people wouldn't actually look into what the probability calculation was actually for. Well, I did, and it's a lot more mundane than what people assumed at first. I'll let 2021 Keith explain exactly what this was. Although I I do suspect Nike wanted everyone to assume that at first glance. What the individual explaining is actually the probability of someone who has already won receiving either the first pair, the all white pair, or the black pair, the last pair. The reason this makes sense is because remember, it is a mystery which colorway you will be getting. Therefore, this example is actually calculating the probability of someone who already got exclusive access, who already won it, in receiving either the first pair or the 50th out of the other 48 pairs. The two unique colorways, essentially. That 4 out of 100 number is not your chance of winning. In order to calculate that, you would need the total amount of active sneakers accounts that engaged with Nike's content to what they deem efficient, in addition to the total stock of each exclusive access release. So here I have presented a hypothetical example of the probability that you guys actually want to see. This takes the 1900 stock per region per drop, which we know is accurate because that is the stock that was loaded onto their endpoint then we take a hypothetical estimate of how many Nike sneakers accounts they will be pulling from. I have no idea what this number will be, so let's be conservative and just say a million. This leaves you with a probability of 0.19% per drop. Or assuming you want the probability of the five total drops, and still getting a chance from there, a 0.94% probability of getting access to any of those five, of which one already occurred. Yes, not even 1% in that conservative case. For all we know, it could be very well much more than 1 million that they're pulling from, considering tons of people now are using automated software to farm activity on hundreds of sneakers accounts. The point that's relevant here is that Nike really wants to emphasize the importance of probability and connecting that to the article on how one can increase that probability which they claim is engagement. However, in my later video where I analyzed the public's anecdotal evidence regarding the importance of engagement, it seemed to be quite the contrary and there actually was no correlation. So why would Nike do this? Well, it goes back to what I praised them for earlier and that is brilliant marketing. They're incentivizing us to spend more time on their app, engage with the content, look at their products, and they don't even have to spend a single dime on the marketing. And this leads me to say that perhaps it is not so far-fetched to conclude that Nike may have decided on a new way of selecting accounts during this crucial period, but considering they had free marketing to gain by letting their old method out of the bag, perhaps they decided to make a show of it. Imagine your child no longer wants to play with his teddy bear because it's not fun anymore. Rather than just throwing it in the garbage can, why not give it to the dog first and let it get some use out of it? In this case, that was free marketing. Or alternatively, perhaps there wasn't even a teddy bear to begin with. In other words, Nike never even had this complex algorithm that checked for engagement. Perhaps they just pretended to throw us that teddy bear, which we all, of course, fell for like f 
fucking idiots. This is precisely the theory that I proposed in that 2021 video where I analyzed the public's response. In doing so, I provided three potential theories. The third theory of which, being this so-called algorithm, didn't even take engagement into account at all. And maybe that our prior anecdotal evidence through 2020 could have just been confirmation bias. Allow 2021 Keith to once again explain this. So while the reasons people have theory number two are accurate, the one factor that debunks this is the simple fact that people who have been investing time and genuinely try to engage with the app are also receiving exclusive access. This leads me to the third theory, which revolves around Nike simply not putting sufficient effort into the algorithm. Clearly, there are inactive accounts winning if they take hours to sell out. We have numerous witnesses reporting this if you want to check out the Twitter replies in my question. And people with no engagement, again, are winning and they have acknowledged this. However, people who do engage are also winning. Hence, I believe the bar Nike is set for so-called engagement must simply be immensely low. As for what this is, I have no idea. I can only hypothesize that you have at least needed to logged into the account on a mobile device perhaps at least one time, and possibly you may have needed to scroll around a little bit, click around a little bit on that one account, and at the absolute maximum, maybe you needed to have gone for at least one drop in the past. But unfortunately, when it comes to exclusive access, I don't believe there is much more to it. I believe this is a very lazy algorithm at the end of the day. And yes, I really do mean lazy, not impossible. All Nike really needs to do is add a couple more if statements into their algorithm for checking if a user has viewed certain content, for example. If Nike wants this to be fair, then they will need more than an X, Y, and Z. They'll need many, many more variables, and this, of course, will take some time to program in. All of this is very possible. It just needs to be executed. There just needs to be some more time put into it. And so this leaves us with the most likely outcomes being that Nike either changed their algorithm to no longer requiring immense engagement or there never really was one that involved this to begin with. Now, in a joking manner, I actually said something pretty interesting in that 2021 video. I can only hypothesize that you have at least needed to logged into the account on a mobile device perhaps at least one time. Huh an account being logged in to the same device. Can it really be that simple though? Well, not quite, but perhaps almost simple. Perhaps a reason these bots are struggling to hit even with browser mode and anti-bot APIs is because each browser is like a unique login for the first time. It's a brand new session when it opens up those browsers. Have you ever noticed that the people who tend to hit the most frequently on sneakers have a goddamn screen for each device that they have? Perhaps the most important key factor isn't engagement, but rather just being logged into the same session for an extended period of time. How long? I'm not sure, maybe a day, maybe a week, maybe since the prior drop. Either way, this is just my theory. So whether you're entering multiple accounts into the next two minute Leo drop or 10 minute draw, perhaps consider using every device you have and ensuring that you have logged into that device on a verified account at least one day before, or maybe try a couple days before, maybe a week before. Again, this is just a theory, but at the end of the day, I want to do everything I can to help you guys cop, and part of that is experimenting, so let's experiment. And not only that, but I also think it's important to mention that maybe we don't have to spend all this time watching all these sneaker stories and liking all these posts because at the end of the day time is money guys anyway that'll conclude it for today feel free to leave a like if you enjoyed or perhaps if you learned a thing or two here subscribe and enable post notifications this way you stay 100 updated on all hype releases also you can feel free to follow my personal instagram to get to know me a little bit outside of this that is keith underscore adam underscore also feel free to check out the links in the description below for liable fast residential proxies and pre-verified nike sneakers or adidas accounts also follow endurance's twitter for updates on restocks or key giveaways and the same goes for Gargantua if you want to keep up with the progress or restocks. Last but not least, make sure to follow Keith Adam 10 and Personals for you so you guys stay updated on all urgent info like I was discussing today. With that though, I will see you guys later. Have a fantastic rest of your day.